just want to give a shout out. I don't know if they're watching or not, but a shout out to my sisters, my brothers-in-law, and my aunt, and along with Sally. Uh, they, they are, everybody's here uh, safely. Um, made the trip to Atlanta yesterday. Uh, always fun. Five hours on, uh, in the car. Two and a half down and two and a half back. Woo! Yeah, buddy. But we get to be in the Word again. That's right. And I think uh, for our text today, plus our additional text, um, it's very important uh, that abide in the Word um, because of the challenges of the faith. Um, and so we will. Uh, I we're having a fifth text because I'm not preaching on one of the assigned texts. I wanted to move out of that because of the assigned text. So. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks again as we uh, start this season of Pentecost. We know that it's about the church and about what we do as the church as we've heard the last couple of weeks about the calling that you that you've sent us out on. But now with these texts today, we, we realize that it's not an easy task. It's, it's one that the, the world really doesn't want to receive, but it's the one you want to give to the church, to, to the world. And so you use your church to do that. So enable us to see how we are kept uh, in your grace and, and kept under your care uh, to do that work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Follow the prayer, right? See, see what I was tracking with the prayer with the text? Jack knows my prayer is to lead into where we're going to go. Where you're going. I'm well, going a whole different, different direction. I mean, you know. You can't go in a whole different direction. <laughs> I'm going in the right direction. You're, you're in the turn line. <laughs> yeah, but you're the one with the blinker on. <laughs> and it never gets shut off. <laughs> we are starting in Jeremiah 20. And don't you sing. You already did it once. <laughs> Jeremiah 20, verses 7 to 13. Um, you want to read or Sure. Read? Well, if you read this one, you... i got to read three. Wait a minute. Do you want me to read? No, that's fine. Okay. okay. Jeremiah 20, starting in verse 7. O Lord, you have deceived me, and I was deceived. You are stronger than I, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all the day. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I cry out, I shout, violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and a derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more of his name or in his name, there is in my heart as it were a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I am weary with, with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is on every side. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. Say all my say all <clears throat> say all my close friends watching for my fault. Perhaps he will be deceived. Then we can overcome him and take revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble. They will not overcome me. They will be greatly shamed, for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, who tests the righteous who sees the heart and the mind, let me see your vengeance upon them. For you too I have committed my cause, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy and he, from the hands of the evildoers. I want to see the vengeance. <laughs> That's what he said. I'm just repeating the word. <laughs> right, because... He's a little frustrated. Have you ever been frustrated? Uh, never in my life. Huh? Have you ever been frustrated when you, you've been doing the work of the church? <laughs> Have you ever been frustrated? Have you ever been frustrated? My crusty replacement is over there. Don't give away the fire. Have you been frustrated when the people don't want to hear the word that you have to speak? Or just, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Pastor, just 
give me a, give me a n- nice pleasant sermon. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? I want to I want to make a comment about the songs last week. They were great. <laughs> They're always great. They're always great. Here we go again. <laughs> No. Other than that one Willington song, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, awkward. Yeah. But doesn't that Willington song fit in with this? <laughs> this is just, I mean, he's going to sing it for this one. No, 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 but isn't it a great lead-in for these texts? Because, again, I was saying we were called, but then that last hymn says, um, be careful to what you're called to. Right. Yeah. Be- because this work, yeah, again, that, I, that's where Jeremiah is, is going off the rails, is... He wants another job. He don't like the one that was given to him. <laughs> How many people in the church do that, though? <laughs> they, they, they want, give me this job. Yeah, but that's not the job you're gifted for, or that's not the one that I see that you could really, you well, know, be, a, be of service to the Lord with. Well, somebody tricked them into it, right? But I'm a woman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, the Lord deceived them. The Lord the deceived them. He tricked them. That's what he said. Yes. I know. It's almost like Adam and Eve in the garden. Right? Lord, Adam, God, this woman you gave me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the same attitude. I mean, she had a conversation all night. Yeah, he's having the conversation going, and you know how that's going to turn out. It's going to turn out really good. <laughs> but but yeah. I, 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 I love the transition in number nine, though. Yeah, right. he, 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 yeah. He, 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 he's, he's frustrated, and then he goes, oh, yeah. But if I would try to keep my mouth shut, the, you know the, the, the fire would be burning in me so much that I couldn't keep my mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, he's compelled to, to, to proclaim the Lord. Right. He, right. You know, and the Holy Spirit is, is, is not going to give him rest. You've had that experience preaching. When, when you get when you get in, in, into preaching it, it's, it, it's like... you got to say it. Right. you just got to say it. You and, 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 and you know, you and I have had those discussions. Sometimes it's like... I really don't want to say this. Sometimes, sometimes you have to not say it when it when it's your agenda. Right. When oh, the people really need to hear this. Yeah. If, if you ever think that, it's, it's not. It, it's not. <laughs> don't preach it. It's got to preach to you. It, 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 it's got to be that. And, and if it's if it's one where it's like, man, I don't really know if I should preach this. <laughs> That one you better preach. Yeah. Because if you're being convicted. I, I don't. Don't ask that. And you, you, you preach it, no matter what the format of the form is, you catch it afterwards. And you got to be ready to catch all the comments afterwards, too. Right. Because people don't want to hear certain things. Right. And, and the reality of it is, if, if you, and, and that's the whole text, whether you, you're preparing for Bible study or preparing for sermon, is if you're faithful to the text, and again, you got to remove. Your, it's it's hard to do. You got to remove yourself from it, and that's and that's the problem Jeremiah's having right now is he's having a hard time removing himself from it. But then when he finally gets back to the the text that the Lord wants him to preach, he's gone. It's fire in my bones. Yeah, but even then, even after that, he knows he can't be silent, but he wants to see the vengeance. <laughs> right? He wants to see the resolve. In other words, it's like saying today, all right, have enough of this garbage going on and the political I want to I want to see you act, Lord. I want you I want to see your fire and brimstone. Bring a plane down on the Capitol building. Uh-huh. <laughs> Careful what you right? Say. Right? There are might be a Facebook channel. Uh, I mean it's I'm watching that uh, show Designate Survivor. I'm watching it a second time all through all the, you know, the capital just gets burned down and all the leaders get consumed except for the designated survivor and the one who hit. But, you know, it's like, what if that happened today? Would we be more corrupt or less corrupt as we rebuilt the government? And again, you know? this this becomes the difficulty because, and, and we, we've talked about this on Mondays also, is when we choose to make it according to our rules and our laws, it's going to get screwed. And that's what happens with the nation of Israel. Right. 
I mean, over and over and over again. Now we are. Now here is Jeremiah's Solomon. Hey, this is going to happen. The fire of brimstone, it's coming. And they don't want to hear it. Right, right. But, but again, his satisfaction comes in verse 11. The Lord is with me. Um, and and I'm, I moved down to 12. He tests the righteous. He sees the heart and the mind. He knows who we are. Right. He knows who we are. He, he, he knows in spite of our grumbling and complaining, he knows our heart. And he's still going to protect us, to preserve us. So in, in your situation with whatever happens in Washington, D.C., He's got it. He's got it. He's got we, it. And, and sometimes we spend way too much thought and time and worry on that garbage. That's what it is. It's garbage. Yes, we need to be concerned. We need to do our, our citizens' rights and all that. But don't get so consumed that it keeps you away from this. Right. Exactly. But I mean, through this whole process, I, I'm looking at, you know, where he started and where he ends up. And obviously, that's a whole act of sanctification, going through that, changing of his mind, not being able to to hold it, hold his hold the Lord's message in. And what what changes his mind? What changes our mind? The Holy Spirit. Yeah, but through oh, through the Word, right, words, and right, 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 right. But right. yeah, I mean, obviously, it, it's it's just amazing how this verse switches. Mm -hmm. You know. In just a short time, it's like, oh, the light went on, right? <laughs> that made me think, you mm -hmm. must be ADHD. <laughs> the next text is a song. <laughs> but, 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 but before we, before we, because this is a connecting piece even to my text. Okay. Verse 13. Okay. Because ultimately, ultimately in the end, here he is complaining, here he is bemoaning, here he's... Finally being reminded, and then he says, sing to the Lord. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We can sing those songs because we know whose hands we're in. In good times and in bad. Yep. It's, and especially as he's going, especially in the bad. So, so nice segue. Sing. We move to the Psalms. Psalm 91. Well, I'll read verses 1 through 10, and then I'll also read 11 through 16. I think I'll say, yeah, they tied. I, right, why they put a parenthesis verses, again, sometimes I don't understand, but um, I didn't look closely enough, but... They just didn't want to hear me say read verses 1 through 16. Right. <laughs> just the first 16. Just the first 16. Uh, so Psalm 91. Oh, there's no header on this one. No, there is not. That's the only song that there is no matter to Really? That I'm aware of. Okay. <clears throat> he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And we're not singing it. I think we're singing it next week. Okay. A mighty fortress. Uh, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions. Yeah. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder. The young lion and the serpent you will trample on your foot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Notice how the, the person speaking, it switches. It switches the last three verses. Yeah. In other words, now it's God talking. Right, 
He wraps it up. Well, and, and the, the same thing's happening to Jeremiah, because why does Jeremiah change his tone? Is the Lord is speaking to him. Right. We don't hear the voice of the Lord speaking to him, but we know the Lord is speaking to him to remind him, hey, hey, Jeremiah, it's me. Right. I'm God. You know, he's, he's, talking, <laughs> he's talking out of his out of his frustration and, and the Lord assures him. Right. So we have that going on. Yeah, just, uh, just without heading, they weren't sure who the author was. Okay. And they weren't sure if it was part of verse uh, of the same. Of, of 90? Of Psalm 90. Okay. So, which would put it back into David. Right. So, they, you know, there was some question on that. Okay. But yeah, we, we and you notice my little comment in there, you could get a mighty fortress out of this, even though this isn't the almighty fortress passage. But yeah, you get that. That's, you know, and, and again. Getting back to Jeremiah, the, the realization, it, and, and it's interesting here. It says, you know, it says that that will, it will not touch us, or how does it work? It will not come near you. Right. Well, I'm sorry, but you know, some of these things they get right. Yeah. They get, but it's that sense of no matter how close they get, they can't get to you. So they can't get to you. No. Right. I mean, are we talking about the physical aspects? But we talk about spiritual aspects, right? And, and you know, we have, we have to realize, you know, if we abide in the shadow of the Almighty, which is abiding is neat, but in the shadow of the Almighty, I know you like abiding. I do. I love that. <laughs> uh, you know, if we're under, under His shadow, he, he is sheltering us, He's covering us. You know. Well, and, 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 and again, that that wording of a fortress. You know, sometimes you think of shelter. You think of the the Feast of the Booths, remember the yeah. Feast of the Booths? Right. You know, they were being reminded of how God sheltered them. Right. But this is a fortress. Right. This is this is not them building little huts all over. No. No, this is a permanent structure. Right. This, this is something that has might and power behind it. Uh, this is something, as we know, it's unconquerable. Right. Uh, and it switches from the Lord to God, you know, Jehovah. Right. You know, I mean, the, the, El Shaddai's in there. El Shaddai. I mean, it's 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 the awesomeness of God. You know, all his attributes. Right. Right. Yeah. Let's use up as many names as we can. Right. So we're reminded it, it's it's the all encompassing God. Right. And and I like that his faithfulness is a shield and buckler. Did you did I mean, you look up? You know that? the difference between the two, right? I, in my notes, I've got one is a large thing, the other one is a small thing. The shield is a small shield. The buckler, the buckler is, a, is is encompassing it. It goes, a, it's not only in front; it wraps to your sides. Okay. So it's a larger shield. Right. So it's so so the image I get is in the in the big things and then the little things. He's got you covered. What, large and small. No matter what, no matter how, how big it is, no matter how small it is, he's, he's got, got you. It. He's got you covered. And how often do we think, oh, I can take care of this myself? Right. And, and, and here, the ESV does it again. How many people know what opinion is? Okay? I mean, I do. It's a, the feathers. Why can't they just say the feathers? You know, I mean, it's... it's Mine does. Does <laughs> yours? <laughs> I mean, different translations do have that. So why do we have to go to a word, you know? Well, and, and, and again, the image there, we, we hear Christ saying, I wish I wish I was a mother hen that I could gather the brood under my wing. Oh, that's uh, Matthew no, you found 23, that? 37. Okay. All Jerusalem, all Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and, 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 uh, and stones those who are sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. Yeah, I mean, right? This is it. Well, it, it, well, this that is the opposite of this because they they didn't want to be under the no, the, the, the the wing, but here he he wants to be under the wing. He knows the protection that that the mother hen or the right. as we saw last week the eagle. You know, they sing the songs, right? But yet they. Yeah, that's why all the hymns are great. <laughs> <laughs> Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. <laughs> Aren't there hymns like that, though? There are hymns that, that bring out the, yeah. the, 
the bad stuff. No. Oh, well, why do we have to sing these hymns? Because they remind us about God. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, and again, yeah, and that's why this is so, you know, this is such a, a good contrast to the Jeremiah passage because it reminds us, okay, yes, we're going to get frustrated. We're going to, there are going to be times when we do ministry where even our individual conversations with people, we get frustrated that if they would just see Jesus, if they would just come to Jesus, then, but it's not our job to do it. It's our job, to, as Jeremiah, it's our job to just, I, I can't keep this message in, in, inside of me. The fire is burning. burning. Message, right. right. Yeah. And, and, and realizing, as the psalmist does, realizing that he will, he will take care of me. He will, provide, he will provide the word sometimes. And, oh, by the way, who does the conversion? But I mean, if, if you go through this the psalm, uh, one of the things that hit me through the whole psalm is, uh, and I bold it and underline, wickedness has its own reward. Okay? I mean, when you go through this, you know, how many are going to fall? You know, I mean, wickedness has its own reward. And, and yes, I know. I like Jeremiah. I like, would like to see sometimes that vengeance of the Lord. Uh -huh. But I know it's not my place. Right. And it's not my place. You ain't got I'm not God. You know? And, and, uh, it's, just, it's just difficult at times when you get frustrated. Like, what? Why are these things happening? How can that person get away with this over and over and over again? How can the government make these rulings and, and, and people get away with so much and others get away with nothing. Re remember they're the government. Yeah. You know, I, they, they, I get more upset when the church does those things. They should know that. They should know because they are the right hand. You know, the government's in the left hand. And yes, God can influence that. He does. And he does. But when the church does it, they're in the right hand kingdom. They should know better, <laughs> and they do the same stupid thing. You know, the, the, I, I'm I'm doing a class as, in my role as circuit visitor uh, on reconciliation, and, and that reminded me of one of the quotes from last week's class. It says, "Idols demand a sacrifice." Yes, Th that's to me the same thing. Yeah, yeah. idols demand a sacrifice. Right. So. When, when you worship something else, it will demand something from you. It will demand blood. It will demand even death. Yeah. I mean, right. So, so yeah. So, so you get to verse thirteen. Even, even in those moments, you will tread on the lion and the adder. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about you, but I, I don't want to be anywhere near a lion or an adder. But sometimes we are called to. Tread on the line in the end. Um, sometimes we are called to do the, the hard things of ministry, and but we'll, we'll be fine. We've got our refuge. Did you pick up? Okay, you didn't watch the video. No. Okay, so uh, uh, it says, uh, I'm not checking on the movie verse where it talks about fear who and who has the power to go in the body and the soul. Oh, that's in the, that's in the gospel. Is that in the gospel? That's in the gospel. Yep, 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 yep. Yep. That's in the gospel. Save it. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Because, hey, we'll keep them right on track. We needed about a 12, 12 minute <laughs> time frame. We're, we're right at 12 minutes for the first two. You're doing rough. <laughs> You're keeping me on task. Romans 6, folks. Romans 6. Oh, this is good stuff. Well, Romans is good stuff. Oh, is it? Oh, oh. Is it? No, it's 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 See my notes? Where's the word? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. It gets a little difficult to read sometimes. Romans 6, verses 12 to 23. You got it? Romans 6. 12 to 23. Yeah. And then uh, to 23. 23, okay. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members to sin as an instrument for unrighteousness, 
But present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey? either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you were once slaves of sin and have become obedient in the heart to the standard of the teaching to which you were committed. And having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitation. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity, and to lawlessness leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. For whom you were slaves to sin, for when you were slaves to sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things which you were being ashamed, for which you are now ashamed? For in the end, those things is death. But now you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God the fruit that leads to sanctification and its ends, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I saw your post. Oh, <laughs> you like that? I like that. Yeah, I tagged you in that, didn't I? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yep, yep. You know, when I was reading this, I've been reading a lot in Ecclesiastes, little verses here, okay. and, and, the, and the futility of Solomon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in, in, in all that he's found, you know, it's just, you know, vanity of vanities, you know, chasing after the one. And when I'm, when I'm reading this about, yeah, you know, in my, in my search of, of the law and trying to do things on my own, and right. looking for those pleasures and all, it's in vain. It's, it's right. You know. But we like checklists. Yeah. We, 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 we feel like we've accomplished something when we can check things off. Watch my grocery list, you know? Yeah, exactly. Or your honeydew list. I don't have one of those. Yeah. Dirt for coming, buddy. The lightning section. I'm lying here in a Bible study. <laughs> well, and, 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 this, and this factors into the, the text I'm, I'm pulling in Colossians is. Um, we we like to wrap ourselves in law. Yeah, and, and and generally we like to wrap ourselves in law because we can make a comparison. Look at me, right? And and, and I'm better than you because I obey more of these. Just, to me, it, it, no, no, these these verses all talk about justification and sanctification. Right. I can justify myself. And I'm lost. Well, or I can take the justification given to me by the cross. Right. I'm justified in Christ. Right. And now the sanctification begins. Right. And, and, and you did a great job with with uh, pulling in the Galatians passage in, in your in your uh, post. And 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 but again, and, and and what you did on that post is you're going to be a slave to something. We are. You're going to be a slave to something. So so are you going to be a slave to self? Or are you going to be slave to God? You know, because if you're slave to self, yeah, you you just put yourself in the position of God, and 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 he even says if if you are a slave to self, a slave to unrighteousness, you're dead. That's just yeah. You're dead. If if you want life, be a slave of God. Yeah, and people don't like to hear that slave terminology. Yeah. But, but that's the reality. I mean, I probably should have posted that a few days earlier. How come? What did we just celebrate? Um, sure. Okay? Sure. The freedom. Right? Freedom. Right. You know, right? It, it, I mean, but, but that play, freedom is different than our freedom. But play with that. There was freedom that they had that they didn't realize the freedom 
Is, is, is that what we're dealing with here? Exactly. That's my point. They, 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 they don't realize the freedom that they have. They would rather live under the law. They would rather live under rules because they think, oh, rules free us. Well, rules give us some guidance, but they don't free us. You know, I, I'm still bound by driving 55 miles an hour. Somebody out of mind didn't drive 55. <laughs> you behind me all the back. Well, I know you would. <laughs> As I said earlier, don't be an anchor holding me down. <laughs> no, and again, and, and, and that's the beauty of the word is, and like you said, we, we are free. When we when we are slaves of God, we are free to do. That's the sanctification. We are free to do those things of God without any qualms or problems because we don't. We know they don't matter anything for our salvation. Our salvation is our salvation is assured. It's done. Right. It's done. right. You know. And whether I fail, it's not a life. Uh, whether we whether we do them and fail. <laughs> Brief interruption. <laughs> uh, we love children, I'm telling you. You know what? Jesus it's worth it. It's, 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 it's all, you know, when a child needs help, God sent them our way. I just, you exactly. know, in circumstances in life, as we, go, as we go through things, we have to look around and we have to be aware of what's going on around us. Where can I be a help? And it's not what I'm looking to do, it's what God is looking to do through me. Right, and, and we're, we're dealing with a text right now, and if we're bound by the law, it's like... Yeah, right? Right. And, and, and so we miss an opportunity to help and assist and meet a need, right. because we're so confident we gotta, we gotta get the word done. We gotta get done and... You're running along now. <laughs> sets us free. It sets us free when we realize we're not bound by these rules to follow. We're I'm not a slave to the law. Correct. I'm a slave to Christ. Right. The law still has its beauty to it, but, but it becomes a blessing. The law becomes a blessing when, when, we're, when we're bound to God, when we're bound to Christ. It becomes a blessing because look at what we get to do. We get to love our neighbor. Right. As difficult as that can be at times, it's we are given the strength and the assurance to be able to do it. Where before, if I'm under the law and I don't have Christ, I'm only going to have contempt for my neighbor. Right, right. You know? Well, and, and, and with Jeremiah, it, it's, you know, he, he was being bound by the law because, yeah, <laughs> I got to preach this. Yeah. But Jesus wanted to save these people. Mm -hmm. He stood, and, and, and you know, your frustrations with the government. God still wants, he wants to save all those people. He, 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 wants, he wants to create a government in our country that is pleasing to him. But, but he's dealing with sinful people, just like us. Uh, is, is, is the church always going to get it right? Well... <laughs> yes. Is, is, the earthly is, church is, is, is never or right. It's not always going to get it right. Is the con <laughs> with, with my note from Monday, is the congregation always going to get it right? Is the church going to get it right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go with those. <laughs> because again, if you didn't see Monday, I, I said, uh, typically when I think church, I think big C church. Right. So, so I don't, I don't distinguish big C church and little C church. It's, it's big C church or congregation. Congregation. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, again, how freeing that is to know. Okay, I'm surprised you didn't change the reading on it. Verse thirteen. Verse thirteen. Yeah. Thirteen. Yeah. Do not present your members to sin as tools for unrighteousness, <laughs> but present yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as 
tools for righteousness. <laughs> Jack has a fairer translation. So yeah, uh, again, that that's the psalmist. The psalmist says we are protected. We are, we are under the refuge. We we are living within a mighty fortress. So we have a freedom to do those things that he wants us to do. Not an obligation to do them, but a freedom to do them. We we don't have to do them. We get to do them. Oh, and, and how freeing that is. Agree. Your tax on our tool. <laughs> I knew he'd find it. I knew he'd find it. You got anything else there? No, I'm good. <laughs> okay. So we move to Matthew, the gospel. Matthew 10, 5a. Yeah. Because, because you have to you have to realize Jesus is already speaking here. Right. And so you get the little introduction at the 5A to let you know that Jesus is speaking. And then, and then we move uh, to 21 to 33. So 5A, these 12, Jesus speaking about the disciples, these 12 Jesus sent out instructing them. And then 21. Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his child. And children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next, for truly I say to you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? That's a key verse to my sermon text. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. When I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, there's you. That's it. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body and health. Are not two sparrows sold for any? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my father who is in heaven. And whoever denies me before men, I, will, I also will deny before my father who is in heaven. Yeah, this, this is why I didn't want to preach this with my my family here. Bro brothers will deliver brother over to death. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and, and my sisters are here. Uh, no, 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 I don't want to preach this. Sex. <laughs> you really burden God, don't you? What? You really burden God. Why? Well, I don't have as many here as you, so I've lost the burden. Moving on. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> That's my crown of glory. Yeah, but you notice how white mine are? Yeah. You, you know who my burden is? You can put your own stuff on. I'm just like Jeremiah. <laughs> Lord, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> so where do you want to go with this one? Well, I know you had you had that insight on that. Um, do not fear those who kill the body. Yeah, I got that. It, one of the things that, you know, he talks about, you know, uh, Beelzebub. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. Another word for Beelzebub is dumb. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it, the god of the dumb. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, it's... And when you think about that, it's worthless. It's useless. Well, it's, right. It's, it's, an, it's another name for Satan. So yeah, that, it's it's totally useless. It's it's of no value whatsoever. Right. I mean, so I, I thought that was one of the interesting points. Which which is what the law can be. It can. Be. It, it can be. Yeah. I mean, where's it going to get you? If, 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 if we are so concerned with obedience to the law, it becomes nothing. You know, and then rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body and health. Mm -hmm. Who do we think about? 
We want to think about the devil. But it's not the devil who does the destruction. No. It's God. Right. The judgment is done by God. Right. Right. And so that's who we need to fear. It's, it, 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 it can all read that verse wrong, and that came out in the video. Well, and, 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 and the reality, too, is who, who are, and that's why I love that section in there, because three times it says, do not fear. You know, verse 26, so have no fear. Uh, 28, and do not fear. And 31, fear not. Uh, again, right. where where are we putting our trust? Where are we putting our reliance? Um, and, and that's why he begins with, and it, and, it, and it continues next week, because I'm preaching on the gospel text next week, and it's the one that follows up right after this, and it's, right. the, it's the same message, um, just worded slightly different. You know, if, if, we, if we put our trust and reliance upon family, uh, upon government, upon medical science, um, yeah. brother will deliver brother over to death the fuck do they disappoint the ones that you love the most disappoint you the most yeah right and yeah because that's what we put our trust in right right I mean we seek them to be our mighty fortress yes in all times, in all places, in every situation, I rely on my wife. Has she let me down? Let me put that differently. <laughs> Have I ever let her down? Either way, you either know? way you go. I mean, it, I, it, it, we it, both it, fail each other. Right. But we both hold each other up. But the only, the, yeah, it's a two way street, right? You don't give 50 50, you give 100 100. You give your all. You know, and in that relationship, I know that there's going to be times that things are going to go south and not work out. Because but, because, because you're measuring her against the law. Exactly. But when I look to the Lord, regardless of the consequence, he never lets me down. I may not like the situation or something the way it's happening, but I know that he's got it. I, you know, I'm frustrated with the government right now. I really am. That's one of my peeves right now. Pet peeves, whatever you want to call it. But I know that he's got it. And I know that it's going to work out the way that he wants it to work out. And I also know that in his word, he promises things will get worse. So, right, right? Which means, could this be the onset of the end time? We don't know. But if it is, do we have anything to fear? No. No. I mean, yeah, times, I, I really, I really don't want to be alive in the end times. Well, we are in the end times, but I we mean, are in the end times. When, yeah. when, 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 when we're getting close to Christ's return, I really don't want to be alive right. because, because, yeah, scripture for, doesn't. Scripture says, "For the sake of the elect, it's cut short." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. This, this is this is enough wording that you know. Here's here's where here's what's going to happen now. This is what's going to happen the closer we get to the end times. We're experiencing it now, but it gets worse. It gets worse. Well, and, 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 and again, I, I pointed out that one passage in 25. Uh, if they call the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign against? Uh, and, and so if your master is the dumb, if your master is Satan, if your master is the law, what are you, you going to do to the rest of the people in your household? Okay. You, you're going you're gonna to treat them. Yeah. Or like really that. mistreat them. You're going to drag them down with you, is what you're going to do. Right. And, 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 and you said something to finish on the thought. You know, if, if, if you look at your wife and compare it to the law, you're going to be disappointed. But if you look at her through the eyes of Jesus, See, I look, what, what, you're going to be more forgiving. Right. I look. That's, to, to, that's key to the clock. Yes, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> and look at my wife, and I'll probably get talked to later about this. But I do. I look at my wife as a gift from God. Sure. She truly is a gift from God. And, and you are a gift from God. I am. But <laughs> but, <laughs> but I look at her, and, 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 I, and I realize, and I have to confess, as a gift from God, 
how can I be frustrated or angry or whatever with her? Because first of all, you know, God put her in my life. Right. So I should be thankful. Well, and, 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 all and that's and that's the forgiving eyes of Jesus that you're looking at her through when you realize she's a gift from God. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, how, how many children on Christmas morning open up their present? Because this happens. They open up their present and they're disappointed that they didn't get what they wanted. Right. Because they don't see the gift that has been given. They, they look at the gift that they wanted. That they want. And, and that again, that's law. That's law. I, I, I'm, I'm, comparing, I'm comparing this against this. That's law. And, and so, so, you know, again, we, we mentioned about the whole month of June, and, and we compare those people against the law, and, the, and, and they disappoint. But, but if we changed our mindset and looked at them through Jesus' eyes, we see people who are, per, what did I say? Um, they are harassed, harried, and hurting with what I said Sunday. I mean, it's easy to look at the things well within the church with their own, within our congregation. It's easy to be frustrated with things that aren't being done that need to be done. But the other end of that is we should be thankful that the things are done that have been done. Right. Rather than and then see the good things, not the shortcomings. Because if Christ is working through the whole situation. And people will change. Not because we want them to change, but because God is working in them and changing them. As long as we are professing the truth of the Word of God. Right. right. And, and that's where the, that's where this goes. You know, it, it's, you know, so everyone who acknowledges me before men, we need to pro profess the Word of God uh, to people. Right. Uh, because then that maintains that relationship that we have with the Father. Uh, Proclaim it from the house to house. Okay. Yeah, that's the, and that that hopefully will work. I, I don't know if I'm going to use those phrases. We'll we'll see what pops up from these in the sermon on Sunday because those are additions as I'm 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 working on the sermon. But yeah, that it's, that's really we need to proclaim this news from the housetops um, of who he is. I left you a few minutes extra. I gave you thirteen, not ten. So I'm going to let you read it. <laughs> okay. Colossians 3, gang. And that way you can emphasize where your thoughts are. Colossians 3, 12 to 17. Um, this was one of the texts that Sally and I had read at our wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And another insight, this is, this is the epistle text appointed for the first Sunday after Christmas. <laughs> Okay. That'll be a while. Okay. <laughs> so I and I don't know if it's every year or if it's. Are we doing Christmas in July? No, we're doing it in June. Okay. <laughs> we're not quite to July yet. But uh, again, uh, and and this is pretty much the contrast to what we've been reading about the doom and the gloom and the persecution. And but again, the gospel in there that we've got the one who protects us, who shields us. But now this is the way God does this as we live it out in being a congregation or being the church. Right. Okay? Uh, Colossians 3, beginning in verse 12. Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one, one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So you got the sense of clothing, put on, you know, put on. Uh, and, and that's 
Yeah, and, and, and what I will do with the sermon is we like to put on the law. Yeah, we do. We like to put on the law because because we really don't understand grace. Right. We know what the law is. Right. I can I can live the law. I can define the law. I can change the law. I can I can make the law fit the way I want it to look. But grace? You have no control over grace. Why does he love me? Yeah, why does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 and again, because again, when you look at this, you, you got, because this is really all gospel here. Right. And then, so you, you find, you, you got to find where the law, is, where, where the law part of it is. And that's where I'm going is like, we, we get comfortable in the law. And, and I'm using that imagery, imagery of clothing, and I basically, because again, uh, that binding, I, I don't know how much study you did, the binding is sort of like the, oh, when, when you put a belt on or a cinch on. Well, the binding is, is, it, it, is it's real binding. It's, it's, right. It, it, it's, it, it goes back, well, that actually ties It in makes it, form fitting. Well, it, it ties it into Jeremiah's text. If you look at Jeremiah, before he was put in a stock, but before he was put in that, he was bound and twisted and contorted. But it's also in the sense that this word becomes a fire in my belly. Mm -hmm. right. You know, it, it's so form-fitting that, and, and again, and, and what the law does, and, and, and now I'm, I'm glad I picked this text, because what the law does, it, it makes it loose-fitting. We like to have a little wiggle room. Well, yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, especially as we get older, we put a lot of weight. Right? And so so we, we, we want to find, we want to, we, we want to find, we want to find clothes that are a little bit more comfortable, a not, a, not, a, not as restrictive. The, the thing, not as revealing. So, so, so we, <laughs> we, we, we like, we like the wiggle room of the law, but really the law becomes very restrictive. It kills us. It, 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 when we finally get down to it, the, the law does nothing but create fear and death. The only law I saw here was in verse 13. Bearing with one another, if anyone has a complaint, forgiving each other. You know, as that is forgiving you. To me, that's grace. It's grace. But to me, when I look at that, and I put a little note down here, forgiveness should not be proactive. Oh, wait a minute. No. no. Forgiveness should be proactive, not reactive. Very good. Okay. See, I, I had it. But I, just... wa I wanted to read it wrong because I wanted to come up with a thought. Okay. Forgiveness should be so proactive, <laughs> not reactive. Correct. Don't wait for someone right. to ask for forgiveness. Right. You go and forgive him as Christ forgave us. Well, you, you, you mean. You mean... We don't have to repent, and then our sins are forgiven. You, okay, you're going to get into that theology, are you? <laughs> no. That 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 my my forgiveness is not. I was depending on before life. I was born. Yeah. Yeah, I was forgiven while we were yes. yet sinners. Christ Say, died. I, heard, I, I heard that one recently. Someone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, the forgiveness was, was paid for and done when, when Christ, uh, you know, suffered and died on the cross and rose from the dead. That cinched it. It's done. So well, I like the word cinch. Yeah, cinch it up. You're going to get bound. Okay. Bind, bind, bind it up. Yeah. Get, I, get, it, get it nice. It's done. We're, we're, looking, we're looking real nice now. So whatever I do, it word and be. I need to do it in the name of Jesus. Now, am I going to fail on that? Am I going to do things in word and deed that weren't done for Christ? Right. But again, we know. But that forgiveness. We, we know that because we are in Christ, we will do those things. It's no longer I do them, but Christ who lives in me. I got it in. <laughs> but but that, that becomes the beauty of this text is this is what we are as the church is if it. If we live by the law, if we live by rules, if we live by the thou shalt or thou shalt not, right. it, 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 it doesn't work. But forgive as Christ has forgiven you. No, you that, that's the law. That, and I, I think I said that. Didn't I say that on Monday? 
That what, what, is, what is the greatest sign of love? It's forgiveness. Now, did you pick up on two key words that only one is here? And the difference being being chosen and making choices? We start out as chosen by God. Mm -hmm. And the last verse is the choices okay. in our deeds. I just, I, my focus on chosen and, and, and the commentaries help me with this one. Notice what we are, we are already called. Yes. It, we, don't, we don't earn these titles, we are called these titles. We are chosen, right. holy, and beloved. And you know who else was called chosen, holy, and beloved? Some God. Jesus was. We are, we are called, and, and I work with that, we are, we are called chosen, holy, and beloved because of what Christ right. did. And now because of our baptism, we get clothed. In fact, you know, you, it, it says put on. Actually, who's, who's putting it on? He puts it on us. Right. He puts it on us. And, and so, so that then becomes how we act as church to, to complement the other text. Uh, in the in the time of persecution, who's the only one we have to rely on? The Lord. And, and 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 what does the Lord give us in order to feel that sense of living in the fortress or dwelling in the fortress? Is the church? He gives us all that we need. He, he gives us that church so that we have the two things there: the peace of Christ that rules in our hearts, and the Word of Christ that dwells in you richly. You know, that's, that's the description of the church, is, is the peace of Christ and the word of Christ, which rules over and dwells within. You know, it brings up a thought back that I don't know what year it was the hurricane came through, but our, our a church that we had were once members, members of, and then went out west of town, became members of another congregation. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. So our city, like where hurricane came yeah. through and just... It was a beautiful building. It was a beautiful right. church. Took it off its foundation, I think. It, right. Everything collapsed. It was all down. The only thing that was left was a slab. And the offices behind were intact. Uh, for years, they knew that they had termite infestation. And mm. they treated it. And they, you know, but the damage was done. Right. You know, well, I, bought, I went by and saw that, and it was like, it was devastating to see that. Right. To see nothing but a concrete slab. And it hurt. Mm -hmm. I knew that, you know, God's still here. He's still working through things. Mm -hmm. They still have a building to worship in. They still have a Christian activity center that they converted now to a sanctuary. And, and, you know, so, but it's like things happen in your life. And you wonder, oh boy, that's devastating. Right. But we have to go back to God's God. He's right. Not us. He chose us. And though we make choices every day, which may or may not be the right ones, he chose us, and he doesn't let us go. Do we rely on the people, the programs, the power, the possessions? No. If we do, we're in trouble. It's going to be like that building. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like the people in right. the eyes time. Well, and then it gets back to that last you know, phrase that you mentioned, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. If, if you're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus, Oh, and also, as you go in, give thanks. Give thanks. Yeah. Give thanks. Even in the midst of persecution. Absolutely. Give thanks because it's, God's got it. He's got it. And I'm going through a persecution for some reason. I'm stuck behind this truck, going over the mountain real slow, when I want to get to where I'm going. Oh, it's and Jack's that's, truck. I was going to say, is it an orange truck? <laughs> <laughs> it was Jack's truck. <laughs> I'll text him and tell him to speed up. <laughs> no, you can't text them because you can't it text says, while you're driving. Text while you're driving. Maybe you'll do one of these pull-offs and let me go by. There you go. <laughs> yes, I do. I do appreciate those who do use the pull-offs. Uh, you want to close us? Sure. <laughs> oh, Father, again, we give you thanks for the joy that you give us in sharing your word. Be with us as we go forth. Open our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and fill us with your will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We will hopefully see a number of you on Sunday, and hopefully this has been a good preparation. The, the
Again, the sermon text is off the readings. It's Colossians.